those biomarkers and our capacity to, to measure them leads us naturally to Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> <laughs> if we could have the next, um, the next um, video. So we have uh, very rarely the occasion to, to measure the response um, of the brain at the level of individual nerve cells, because for obvious reasons you can't access the nerve cells in a, in a human brain. We can only do it by and large in experimental animals. But sometimes, particularly during neurosurgery, you can actually listen to individual neurons. Now, inside the brain it's silent, right? There's no sound. But if you put in a microelectrode and you can listen to the individual nerve cells chat to each other, you can hear, in fact, I think we have a recording, they have this sort of staccato sound. If you take the electrical signal and amplify it and put it on a, on, a, on a sound speaker, you can actually hear them talk to each other. Each one is a little, each one tick is a little action potential, it's a little pulse. So this is actually a recording from a, from a, from a surgical measurement where the, the neurosurgeon put a microelectrode into the brain of a patient and this nerve cell responded very selectively only to pictures of Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> I, I, I think it's fair to say Team Angelina. It is true. <laughs> It is true, it was because, why, why Jennifer Aniston? It's not that we're born with Jennifer Aniston neurons, at least hopefully, but we, we're born with a, with a disposition to learn things that we have, to learn things. So, you know, your mother, your parents, the, the president, famous actors and actresses. So here, by mere chance, we happen to come upon a neuron that selectively encoded the, um, the, encoded the presence of, of Jennifer Aniston. And sometimes you find cells <laughs> that even respond to the name <laughs> Jennifer Aniston or to the name of the famous person. It could be your friend, it could be your mom, it could be a famous actress.